around 66 million years ago, dinosaurs were wiped off the face of the Earth. But what exactly caused the mass extinction of the dinosaurs? Was it due to a massive asteroid striking Earth, or was it a series of huge volcanic eruptions more to blame? The answer seems to be that it was actually both. In what some geologists refer to as a one-two punch, the extensive damage and after-effects caused by an asteroid and widespread volcanic eruptions seem to be the most likely explanation for the end of the dinosaur era. For decades, scientists have intensely debated the probable cause of extinction. Evidence pointed to a massive asteroid smashing into Earth near the Gulf of Mexico, and then more recently, further studies have indicated a series of volcanic eruptions that played a huge part in the ending the run of the dinosaurs and much of Earth's plant life. The sudden extinction is also known as the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event, and has been the subject of hot debate amongst geologists. So, let's look at how exactly these two critical events led to 75% of the world's living creatures becoming extinct. Here's what we know. Approximately 66 million years ago, an almost 10 kilometer wide asteroid came hurtling down and smashed into Earth. This asteroid was the size of a mountain and traveled at speeds of around 64,000 kilometers per hour. It plowed into what is now the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico with an explosive force equal to 100 trillion, yes, trillion tons of TNT. An asteroid created a massive crater some 185 kilometers wide and its impact was felt throughout the world. The immediate damage was incredibly destructive, as I don't probably need to mention. Everything in the nearby area was torched by a radioactive blast of thermal energy. Then came the earthquakes and the tsunamis, which were much more far-reaching and far-felt, even thousands of kilometers away. It's estimated that earthquakes measuring as high as 10 on the Richter scale would have occurred soon after the asteroid impact. Tsunamis over 30 meters high also heaped more devastation by flooding huge areas of North and South America. Soil layers around the world dating back to a similar time have also been found with high levels of soot. Soot makes a strong case for a worldwide mass burning down a forest which was kicked off by firestorms resulting from the asteroid impact. However, it was the longer lasting and further reaching environmental impact of the asteroid that really sealed the dinosaur's fate. The soot and ash projected into the sky from the collision would have stayed there for months, coming down in acidic, muddy rainfalls. A seriously deadly effect was the release of toxic gases into the atmosphere. Geologists guessed that around 10,000 billion tons of carbon dioxide, 100 billion tons of carbon monoxide, and further 100 billion tons of methane were ejected into the sky and swept around the world. Most damaging was the massive dust cloud that formed to send debris, ash, and soot into the Earth's atmosphere, and it virtually encircled the entire globe. This was the kiss of death for most of the dinosaurs and a vast number of plant species. The ensuing dust cloud blocked out much of the sun, meaning that the crucial sunlight needed for photosynthesis and plant growth was seriously impeded. Here began the flow-on effect. Without sufficient sunlight, plants around the globe began to wither and die, leading to mass food shortages for herbivore dinosaurs. As they began to dwindle in numbers, the carnivore dinosaurs then faced the exact same dilemma, and species were soon dying out rapidly. But how do we know this? In the late 1970s, a team of geophysicists was looking for petroleum in the Gulf of Mexico. They discovered a massive 185-kilometer-wide crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, near the town of Chicxulub. The crater had an unusually high content of this rare chemical element called iridium. Meteors and asteroids are typically known to contain higher levels of iridium than the Earth's crust. A team of geological researchers was thus alerted to the Chicxulub crater findings. The researchers were looking at the similarities in the Cretaceous-Paleogene boundary around the world. The boundary, also known as the KPG boundary, is a kind of geological footprint of a thin stretch of rock with a high iridium content. The team was led by physicist Luis Alvarez and his son, the geologist Walter Alvarez. They decided that the high concentration of iridium in the Chicxulub crater and throughout the KPG boundary was proof that an asteroid had hit Earth. In what has come to be known as the Alvarez hypothesis, they concluded that the iridium deposits had come from an asteroid that had crashed into the Earth. The ensuing rock debris flung into the atmosphere then caused an environmental catastrophe that eventually wiped out most of the dinosaurs. At the time, this was a controversial theory. Many scientists were convinced that dinosaurs became extinct due to other factors like volcanoes or global firestorms. Over time, though, this theory came to be widely supported. In the early 1990s, further traces of iridium were found in the Chicxulub crater that matched other iridium deposits found in the KPG boundary around the world. However, in 2022, Scientists from Dartmouth College in New Hampshire made a strong case for the role of volcanoes in the dinosaur extinction. The Dartmouth researchers found that a mass outpouring of volcanic activity almost definitely played a strong part in wiping out nearly all of the dinosaurs and 
much of the world's plant life. They hypothesized that either a series of eruptions or one giant eruption flooded vast areas of land with seas of magma, either chilling everything in its path or rendering the land uninhabitable. This volcanic rock created flood basalt. Flood basalt is left behind when intense volcanic activity floods massive areas of land with lava. This process then creates vast regions of igneous rock, also called large igneous provinces. These areas contain at least 100,000 cubic kilometers of magma and are strong evidence of the furious period of volcanic activity. Regions stretching thousands of kilometers were classified as igneous provinces and included areas such as West Central India and Central Asia, just as the asteroid that plummeted into Mexico. The mass volcanic eruptions would have severely affected the Earth's environment. Debris, dust, and ash would have clogged up the atmosphere, resulting in again limited sunlight, acid rain, and toxic fumes. Plant life died out, leaving herbivores and then carnivores with limited or zero food options. Yo know the story. More resilient species like snakes, lizards, and crocodiles were able to battle through the adversity and avoid extinction. Other notable survivors were teeny tiny mammals and our feathered friends in the sky, birds. Birds evolved from the dromaeosaurs, which were related to the velociraptor or the running lizards. When the asteroid struck and mass volcanic activity started, birds have been living with dinosaurs for around 100 million years. Many species of birds were able to survive these severe environmental changes and continue to exist and evolve. Paleontologists have examined the fossils of birds' beaks from around this time and found that the toothless birds may have had a significant advantage over toothed birds and other dinosaurs. These birds were able to adjust their eating habits and they did not have to rely on small insects or plants for food. Instead, they were able to use their beaks to extract tiny nuts and seeds that were often left over from burnt out forests and barren wastelands. By using their resourcefulness to find any tiny scraps of food that they could, birds were able to narrowly scrape by and hang in there and wait for new vegetation and plant life to gradually return to the earth. This was also what kept small animals alive and led them to eventually become the dominant life form on earth. It was a close shave though with up to 90% of mammals being killed off. While mammals came very close to being wiped out, it was the plant and nut eating types that were able to find food in the most absolute remote of areas. These tiny mammals resembled modern day possums and squirrels and they were able to eat nuts, seeds and fruit remnants. Also aiding their cause was the extinction of their carnivore predators, who were dropping like flies around them. Being small was another advantage for the asteroid and volcano survivors. Smaller bodies required less food and gestation periods were typically shorter, allowing them to reproduce more effectively than larger creatures. As the Earth's temperatures began to subside and vegetation slowly started a period of regrowth, mammals embarked on a widespread pattern of diversification. This included a wide variety of new species evolving like whales, cheetahs, platypus, and simians. You know, simians. The double punch of an asteroid and a volcanic flooding is absolutely the most likely explanation for why the dinosaurs became extinct. On a geological scale, the damage wreaked by the asteroid and volcanoes was done in the blink of an eye. It's estimated that over the course of one million years, 75% of Earth, or sorry, life on Earth, became extinct, paving the way for the rise of mammals. When the asteroid hit, it was a real bad day indeed for the dinosaurs. However, it was an unlikely blessing in disguise if you happened to be a mammal. And, of course, one day, a human. 